Uh, Rich Schaefer is our chief engineer, um, and he and his team, as well as our equipment design and engineering team, planning team, bus operations, and others throughout the company have been working collaboratively to define what the future of zero emissions bus deployment looks like at New Jersey Transit. You've heard President Corbett give regular updates at monthly board meetings on our status working toward that goal. Today, you'll receive a detailed presentation from staff on the specific steps uh, NJ Transit plans to take in the future to achieve the governor's vision. Rich Schaefer. Uh, I'm going to start the presentation on page eight of the package you have, which is slide number one in our presentation, and that is our cover sheet. Um, next slide, page two in the presentation, which is how I'll refer to it from this point forward. Uh, New Jersey Transit is committed to a zero emissions bus future. Uh, this is reiterated both in our 10-year strategic plan, NJT 2030, where we specifically say we are stewards for our natural resources and we do need to promote a more sustainable future. Uh, our plan supports the state's ambitious efforts to reduce energy consumption and emissions from the transportation sector. Uh, NJT 2030, our strategic plan, is the guiding light for our capital plan, a five-year capital plan, which was published in June of last year and approved by the board, where we specifically hardwire in electric buses into our future, where we say New Jersey Transit views electrified buses as a major opportunity to reduce CO2 emissions and local air pollution. So this is a commitment that we are very much advancing right now. Moving on to slide three, let's talk a little bit about our zero emissions bus initiative. Uh, on January 17, 2020, for those of you who don't have the specifics handy, Governor Murphy did sign S-2252, uh, whereby we are going to move by 2024. 10% of all new purchases we make of buses will be zero emissions by 2026. 50% of new procurements for buses will include uh, electric vehicle or zero emissions buses. And by 2032, 100% our procurement contracts will be for zero emissions buses. Uh, this is a very aggressive goal for our system. Uh, we have a program that is already in motion. Uh, one of the things that we hope that you take away from this presentation is that transitioning from a unlimited range diesel bus fleet, whereby we can refuel buses within five minutes, to a limited range electric or zero emissions bus fleet is a sea change effort for a statewide agency such as ours. Uh, we have many routes that will have to be revisited. All 16 of our garages will have to be heavily retrofitted, and we will have a northern bus garage effort, which is the linchpin of this program and how we move forward in making those changes throughout our system. Um, we have a, a very cohesive plan that discusses how we go through all these changes that you'll hear today. Uh, when you look at this, you're going to hear different steps in the plan. Uh, some of our early deployment activities, which you'll hear about at Newton and um, Hilton Garages. We refer to much as our uh, Mercury program uh, in likeness to the space program where we are going to deploy these buses. We're going to learn about what they need to operate, how we can operate around them, and then we're going to take that first effort, that Mercury program, and we're going to turn it into an Apollo program where it becomes this massive sea change effort throughout our entire infrastructure to revisit all of our garages and make them capable of managing this very different fleet. Uh, part of that is also a study project, which you'll hear my team talk about in terms of building out the best practices, the standards, knowing what we need to know to make all this happen in the timeline that we are committing to here. Um, one of the things that I think is central to this program is the, the modernization effort and many of the projects which you will see being advanced very, very quickly from this point forward. Uh, the, one of the central goals of our program is to get the actual designs, the physical contracts that advance the structural work to our infrastructure to make it capable of moving to electric buses, is getting to that critical 10% phase of design where we have many more opportunities as they relate to uh, grant opportunities and competitive opportunities to get funding to further the effort. Um, but one of the things that I would like you to understand as you, as you are presented with the next set is that this is a very aggressive, very complex plan. Uh, we're going to ask you to absorb a lot, uh, but the plan that you are going to see is cohesive. It's achievable. 
My team has done a fantastic job of condensing it into 34 very detailed slides. And you will see uh, throughout that we have put a tremendous amount of thought with realistic timelines into this. Um, please feel free to ask as many questions at, as you will at the end. And I will offer that uh, there actually is a quiz at the end. When we get to the end and we made this presentation, there is a realization I had made, and I will ask it back to you to see if you make the same realization at the end. Um, at this point, I'm going to introduce you to the two team members who have advanced this and taken leadership roles. The first is the Director of Capital Planning, Mark Tizzolo, and the other is Dr. Stephen Jenks, who is our Manager of Energy and Sustainability. I will now turn it over to them. Thank you, Rich. Um, I just want, before I jump into the agenda, I just want to reiterate what Rich has said. Um, I want to let everybody know that we, we will be presenting a lot of information today. And we've worked really hard to boil it down to the core elements that tie everything together. And so as we move forward through the slide deck, we'll be letting you know exactly what slide number we're going to be on, and we'll likely include some intentional pauses. And so with that, um, we'd like to give you a high-level overview of the variety of in initiatives and activities that are either ongoing or very close to initiating to give you a sense of how New Jersey Transit is meeting the goals of the state and advancing a zero-emission bus future. The topics we're going to cover today is bus electrification, a preliminary engineering and planning assessment study, our phased zero emission bus deployment approach, our garage modernization in initiative, and our design and investment plan study. Next slide, please. I'm on slide five. We launched a technical study in November of 2019 that we now refer to as a preliminary engineering and planning assessment to understand two key elements. First, how deploying battery electric buses would impact our bus garages and some early infrastructure concept development. And second, how deploying battery electric buses would impact the service we provide. The goal was to understand some of the discussions that we were hearing from our peers abroad and nationally and apply it to our bus routes and facilities. We want to understand the challenges our system could face during the large scale deployment of zero emission buses. Next slide, please. I'm on slide six. The assessment evaluated the four garages that you see on the right hand of the slide, Hamilton, Hilton, Newton, and Greenville. These four garages cover a diversity of New Jersey transit bus routes, garage layouts, and local topologies. And from this assessment and interacting with our sister, with our sister agencies across North America, the International Association of Public Transport, or UITP, and the American Public Tran Transportation Association, or APTA, we have gleaned critical information regarding the challenges in deploying zero emission buses, including infrastructure and operational requirements. Next slide, I'm on slide seven. This graphic summarizes the diversity in mileage of our buses. Route mileage varies substantially along the four garages studied. Our southern buses travel much farther than our northern buses. And these mileage differences will present a challenge as we standardize our infrastructure and operations. The operational ranges of battery electric buses are significantly less than that of a diesel bus. The theoretical maximum range of a battery electric bus is less than the upper limit of trip distances from our Newton and Hamilton garages. Further, the expected battery electric bus range is only 68% of the average trip distance for Newton and only 62% of the average trip distance for Hamilton. So, under the best conditions, we can't expect a battery electric bus to perform equally to a diesel bus without additional charging. Current battery technologies just don't have the, do not provide sufficient energy densities for covering 300 or more miles on a single charge. Next slide, please. I'm on slide eight. Battery electric buses have operational ranges that are lower than our current diesel fleet. And these operational, these op, the operational ranges of these buses are heavily impacted by route topology ambient temperature, HVAC usage, and driver behavior, just to name a few. There are also external factors outside of our control, like route congestion and traffic, that can further impact the range of battery electric buses. On the previous slide, you might have noticed that the theoretical ma maximum range of a battery electric bus is between 240 and 260 miles on a single charge. To achieve that theoretical maximum, the bus, bus, the bus must be nearly empty for the entire trip, traveling without traffic on flat roads and and also not using HVAC at all. So 
240 miles of range is only to be expected under ideal test conditions, and we can't plan on getting 240 miles to a charge under day-to-day -day operations. We have to plan around not only a significantly lower expected range than a diesel bus, but also the extreme variability in that range. Next slide. I'm on slide nine. Our garages were built decades ago. Some were even built for trolleys, but almost all of them were built with diesel buses in mind. And so we're facing challenges at our garages, like utility upgrades, space constraints, equipment needs, and facility layouts. Long lead items, such as, such as substations, charging equipment, bus procurement actions, and, constra and the, the constraints that I just mentioned mean that a single garage upgrade project could take between three and eight years. But we plan on upgrading multiple garages concurrently. We need to address all these challenges and more while contending with a decade of deferred maintenance. And central to our mission, we'll be achieving our zero emission bus goals while providing cost effectiveness and the fewest disruption, disruptions to service that our customers depend on. Next slide, I'm on slide 10. The mass deployment of electric buses can't work without easy to use and easy to maintain modern tools. Ensuring that our dispatchers, drivers, Garage managers have the necessary tools to operate the best system possible is a top priority. To operate this modern bus system, we need to deploy new technologies. And I'm now gonna turn it over to Mark to discuss a summary of what we just learned and our next steps. Thank you, Steve. Hello, board members. We are on slide 11. The four findings Steve just covered tell us we're looking at a substantial change to our service that will impact all aspects of our bus system. The equipment and infrastructure that currently sustains our bus system will likely need to be modified, altered, or replaced to make them complementary to electric buses. Critically, the platform from which we operate our bus system, our garages, will need to be adapted and changed. Our fleet is going to operate differently, and the activities, technologies, and practices needed to keep them running effectively will have to change. This means our bus drivers, our dispatchers, and our technicians are going to be challenged with adapting. The bottom line is this, we're facing a major transformation at New Jersey Transit, and we need to develop a thoughtful approach to manage the challenges. We are on slide 12. So at this point, we've thrown at you some technical challenges and a sense of scale of, of the scale of the complexity of the transformation. Now we can talk about how we're going to meet the challenges head on. And I'll try to break it down, our approach, into three simple activities. Activity one, we're going to have buses on the road so that we can learn from them. Our deployment in the fall of 2021 and subsequent deployments are going to be key sources of data that will allow us to continually improve our strategy. Simply, we're going to learn by doing. Activity two, we're going to move forward to begin to modernize our infrastructure. Modernizing our garages and infrastructure is a critical path to large-scale deployments. We must start this long lead activity as soon as possible so our infrastructure is ready for when the mandate kicks in. Simply, we're going to build the state's zero emissions bus system infrastructure. Finally, we need to model and analyze the bus system with zero emissions technologies in mind to create best practices, standards, and bus system designs that are specific to New Jersey. Simply, we're going to model, plan, and engineer a whole new bus system around zero emissions bus technologies. In summary, to address the goals of the agency and state, we need to simultaneously deploy electric buses and learn from them, tackle long lead items, which is our infrastructure, and develop New Jersey's specific standards, practices, and institutional knowledge based on robust design and planning activities. We are on slide 13. This diagram links the approach I described to you in the previous slide to the various capital projects, programs, and initiatives that will ensure we meet the state's goals for zero emissions bus fleet. It includes learning from the deployments at Newton and Hilton garages by monitoring and evaluating their performance, launching our first design activities for bus garage modernization to prepare for wider deployments, and launching our zero emissions bus system design investment plan and initiative. These efforts are coordinated and planned to inform and build upon each other. As we build up our capacity to manage the transition, we will need to be flexible in our process so that we can evolve to the needs of the state and change in zero emissions bus technologies. It's important that we achieve states of design 10% or higher for a garage modernization program so that future electrification projects are competitive for grants. This approach to infrastructure upgrades and investments is currently incorporated in our capital plan. And as the technology evolves, so will our approach. So with sustainable and dependable funding, New Jersey Transit will achieve the state's legislative mandates. We are now on slide 14. Here are the activities as they look over time. Our zero emissions bus program timeline is predicated on funding availability. 
secure and dependable funding allows us to synchronize with utility partners and other stakeholders involved. And if any of the pieces of this puzzle are delayed, then the whole timeline gets delayed. For example, if funding for garage modernization doesn't become available, our utility provider will, be, will need to wait for necessary coordination um, for power upgrades, which will lead to us not having the necessary infrastructure to house and deploy our buses. Next slide, please. We're on slide 15. This map demonstrates the activities across the state, including two deployment projects, which will occur at Newton and Hilton garages. As outlined in our five-year capital plan, we've identified $2.26 billion needed to address the infrastructure changes. This estimated originated from combining what we've learned from our engineering and planning assessment with the cost estimation process we use for the capital plan. I'll now turn it over to Steve to talk about upcoming deployments. Steve? Thanks, Mark. I'm on slide 16. Newton Bus Garage in Camden will serve as the home to our first battery electric bus deployment. As part of this project, we will be acquiring eight battery electric buses. This project also includes installing the necessary charging infrastructure to support those buses with the possibility to expand in the future. These buses will originate from and end at the Newton Garage. It is envisioned that they will be traveling along eight routes. And these routes are short distance and close to the garage. These shorter routes incorporate lessons learned from the technical findings one and two. Next slide, please. I'm on slide 17. Here's just a rendering of how the charging cabinets and dispensers might look in Newton Bus Garage. Next slide, slide 18. Design and, and, and construction of the garage upgrades are underway with long lead items in the, work, in the works. We've been working closely with PSE&G to ensure that they are aware of our electrical needs and what support we will need from them. Procurement of our eight buses have, has been advertised and deployment is expected to begin fall of 2021. I'm on slide 19. Deployment at our Hilton garage in Maplewood will be similar to Newton. We will acquire eight 40-foot battery electric buses and the necessary charging infrastructure. These buses are expected to run on the number 25 bus line, which operates through Newark and Irvington. I'm on slide 20. Here's how the battery electric buses might look in our garage and the number 25 bus route those buses will support. I'm on slide 21 now. Currently, the design services procurement for Hilton is scheduled in the phase one of garage modernization. Again, we are working with PSE&G to, to ensure that the proper power considerations are made on the, on the utility side of the electric meter. This deployment is expected to, to begin in fall of 2024. I'm on slide 22 now. Having gained some experience with Newton, we've identified some early lessons learned. We need to time out our long lead items properly. Electrical infrastructure like substations and charging stations require significant coordination. Existing conditions at each garage, at each garage present site-specific challenges and considerations. We are constrained both by the amount of space available in our garages and the fact that these garages were not designed with zero emission bus equipment in mind. Commissioning our equipment needs to be carefully coordinated um, among the multiple contractors and, cons and consultants involved. Coordination between multiple contractors and consultants will be critical for bus acquisition and installation of specialized infrastructure such, such as charging equipment. I'm on slide 23. As part of the Newton deployment, we will be performing a data collection and analysis study. As battery electric buses are a new technology for our agency, we'll, we will perform the study to get a better understanding of how this technology will perform under our operating conditions. We will then apply a refined analysis to our Hilton deployment to build out a well-informed and optimized operational strategy that captures the maximum value of battery electric bus technology, such as vehicle-to-grid and vehicle-to-building opportunities. Next slide, I'm on slide 24. And as we modernize, we must address the need for enduring and thoughtful designs and equipment while addressing state of good repair issues. Addressing all these challenges head-on will be the most cost-effective solution. We've been largely unfunded for, for the past decade, and so to be successful now, we need, to, we need the necessary and proper funding to support bus operations. So with su sustainable and dependable funding, we can give bus operations the tools and equipment necessary to run one of the most sophisticated bus systems in the world. I'm now going to turn it back over to Mark to discuss modernization details in our zero emission bus study. Mark? Thank you, Steve. We're now on slide 25. This graphic shows some of the activities that will occur as we modernize our garages. 
As Steve mentioned, we learned a lot from our deployment projects and from our preliminary engineering and planning assessment. All these were built in blocks to develop a program known as garage modernization that we feature and stress in the capital plan. A key philosophy we must keep in mind is that physically making these facilities capable of handling new technology is not the benchmark we can accept. We need to focus on improvements that will reduce the pressure on our operation staff as the transition moves forward. The work that we will do will have to reconcile with the fact that we have a diverse array of facilities, many of which were not designed for their current operations, that we now cram buses into every available space. If we want these facilities to serve as a platform for a sophisticated fleet of zero-emission buses, we need to go back to the drawing board. This means we need to tackle everything from expanding the footprint of our facilities, to roof strengthening for solar systems and power equipment, to digitalizing our yard management practices and addressing basic state of good repair needs. When it comes to the most cost-effective approach, we've concluded that if we were to address each of these elements individually, it would prolong construction disruptions to service and increase overall costs. Next slide, please. We're on slide 26. Phase one of the program encompasses five of our facilities, Wayne, Hilton, Greenville, Hamilton, and Newton. These five locations were chosen to give us the ability to, to deploy across the state. Phase one has committed funding to initiate the program, and we expect to learn a lot from this um, to, to inform future phases. We are now on slide 27. As we move forward with the modernization program and our phase deployments, New Jersey Transit will also launch an activity focused on bus system design and capital investment planning. The goals of this study are to provide a comprehensive strategy for transforming our bus system to zero emissions fleet and to develop robust deployment plans. The creation of deployment plans from this activity is another crucial component for securing grants for bus buses and infrastructure. We are now on slide 28. I will now walk, th walk you through some of the steps that are an important part of this initiative. Because of the pace at which this technology is moving and the fact that a lot of the greatest innovations are occurring abroad, monitor and best practices will be key. As part of this activity, we will continue to investigate best practices by communicating with partners nationally and internationally through collaborations with UIT, UITP and APTA. Uh, as recently as last month, New Jersey Transit participated in organizing and launching an international conference with our national and international peers in collaboration with UITP on the specific topic of electric buses. And recently, our Chief of Bus Operations has toured a facility in Los Angeles in partnership with LA Metro. These activities are good representation of the opportunities at which we can learn and from and share with our peers. Uh, we are now on slide 29. From these best practices, we will build out new modern standards and specifications for our infrastructure, fleet, and other technologies. It will be important we create a living document that is updated as the industry transforms. We hope to have our first draft of this living document a year after notice to proceed and to continuously update it as necessary. Next slide, please. We're on slide 30. We will, we, we will conduct a series of robust transportation planning exercises to model the performance of the bus system with zero emission buses to create a holistic deployment plans. We are now on slide 31. By creating bus network scenarios, modeling the performance of the system, and merging that information with our best practices and standards, we can identify the investments that are critical to a successful transformation of our bus network. We are now on slide 32. All this will give us robust investment plans that can be seamlessly incorporated with our capital plan, which will be important for guiding and coordinating large-scale deployments in the future. It's also incredibly important for ad ad activating various funded sources for fleet and infrastructure. I'll now hand it off to Rich, who will begin to wrap things up with a few takeaways. Rich? Thanks, Mark. Uh, I'm going to move along to slide 33, where we do talk about the RMI Institute Bus Electrification Study effort. This was done in collaboration with the Governor's Office, DPU, DEP, and Transit, and formerly the Rocky Mountain Institute RMI. Uh, this work began in fall of 2019, and it concluded uh, early this year, and ultimately it culminated in helping us shape some of the planning approach to introducing zero emission vehicles in our bus fleet and showed us that it could be done, whereas what we're showing you here shows you how it can be done. Uh, moving on to slide 34, let's talk about some of the key takeaways. And I'd like to start with where I left off in the beginning, where I was going to ask you a question. Um, what we have shown you here today shows um, challenges that are about infrastructure, they're about route structure, and in some ways they're about real estate and making it all fit. At no point in this presentation did we talk about the actual effort of buying a zero emissions bus. Many of the challenges, in fact, almost all of the challenges of this program 
our focus around the infrastructure and the route structure and making that work together so that we can realize the governor's vision and the time frame that we have before us. Um, Mark pointed out to you that we are learning from the assessment study uh, and we are learning from our partners at APTA, UITP, and our own deployments and activities. While what we have shown you today is very dense, it was a lot to absorb, uh, it is important to know that we have a really solid plan in place and we are coming at this from a place of we may not know everything, but we have a really good handle on what we know what we don't know. And this is much of the focus of where we're going to move first. Uh, we have this foundation to lead this a very successful comprehensive zero emissions bus program, as outlined on the second bullet. And it's worth noting that uh, – sorry. And it's worth knowing that this is something that uh, we are enthusiastic to share with you. Uh, we can move it forward. Uh, and we are moving forward with the zero emissions bus program with our phased approach. Eric and uh, I'm sorry, Mark and Steve both talked about the different phases and how we're going to take this one step at a time and move it forward. It is complex. It is doable. This is something that we are going to do, and we've already got the first steps rolling, and the gears are at work to make this happen. 